Hello and welcome to another episode of Phoenix Splash Gaming. I'm Chris the Pocket Master and I'm here to talk about the PS Vita. Hey, it might be a long one, so crack open a cold one, pop some popcorn, here we go. In this video, I will review my personal experience with the PS Vita. This is just a fair warning. I'm going to be very blunt and honest about this device. So if you are a hardcore lover of this device, please have an open mind. I really do not feel I need to say that because the PS Vita community is full of people who just love the PS Vita for what it is and what it has become. I'm sure you all are aware of its flaws that come with it, but hey, I want to share my two cents on the device. They may be similar to your thoughts, or they may not. Who knows? In this video, I will talk about the hardware and how it has held up over the years. My first impressions on the Vita, the games, the things you can do with this device, if I'm still playing it, and if it's worth getting a hold of one nowadays. So let's talk about the hardware. The hardware is very impressive for its time, and even now. I have the first and the second model of the PS Vita and I have to say that I am not a fan of the slim model because it feels like a knockoff. It feels cheap. Yes, the battery lasts longer, but the slim is just not for me. The original model feels like I'm holding a solid handheld device in which the developers poured their hearts and souls into designing. It's beautiful. It feels good when I hold it, it's satisfying when I push down the buttons, and it could fit surprisingly well in my pockets. I wear skinny jeans and I have no issues putting it in and taking it outside of my pockets. However, if I'm not careful with the joysticks, it can get stuck on the edge of my pockets. But if I pay attention, I can get it out easily. The joypad is the best joypad of any handheld or console. I have said it once and I'll say it again. The joypad is perfect for fighting games. You can feel the click every time you input a direction, making games like Street Fighter very easy to play. The joysticks are a huge improvement from the PSP's joystick. This makes 3D games very enjoyable and it makes past PSP games even better when playing it on the Vita. I really wish you can click in R3, but I guess that's what the touchscreen feature and that touchpad behind the device are for. Quite honestly, I highly dislike the rear touchpad, but not all games utilize it. However, the games that do utilize it can drive me nuts, like Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. It's a great game, but the rear touchpad is just so not necessary. My gosh, it's so annoying. I have had my PS Vita for about three years. I bought it from someone that has had it since its release. The hardware definitely holds up and it is in good shape. I have dropped my Vita more than a few times. I also fell down while I was jogging with it and threw it on the floor hard along with my backpack after a long day of work and it's still in one piece. It's very durable but I do recommend getting a case for it if you're considering buying the device. Love your pocket systems, don't kill them. The hardware is amazing. Now let's get into my first impressions on the device. A lot of my friends were telling me that I missed out on the PS Vita and that it's the best handheld ever, which is what convinced me to buy one. So yes, I did buy one, but when I did, I'll be honest, I did not like it when I first bought it. I remember buying three games for it and not being able to play them. I had to set up a PlayStation account first. No shit, right? So I tried to do that and boom, I hit another hurdle. It turns out I have to buy a memory card for the device. And unfortunately, the cards are unique cards that stupid Sony made. So I had to hunt for a memory card. At the time, online prices of a decent 32GB memory card were crazy expensive, and you know what, they're still expensive. The cards went for about 120 bucks to 180 bucks. I wanted the 32GB card, so I looked elsewhere. I looked around local video game stores and nobody had one. There was one at GameStop, but I refused to buy one there because as soon as I was going to buy one for 80 bucks, the person was trying to set me up with a membership and would not take no for an answer. So I just said, you know what, I don't want the memory card anymore, especially if you're going to force me to get GameStop's stupid membership. 
I know that you're doing your job, but no means no. So I left GameStop. I instantly hated the brick I just purchased, because that is what the PS Vita is without a memory card, at least the original model. You cannot just play the games you have, you have to have all this bullshit set up before you can do anything. So eventually I do find the 32GB card I was looking for at Walmart of all places. It was the last one in stock and probably the last one that would ever touch the surface of a Walmart. It was in the clearance aisle for 30 bucks. I was so lucky to find it. And it's kind of funny, I was just going to Walmart to buy groceries. And I just happened to find the thing I was going out of my way to look for. But that's the thing about this device. It was just a huge mystery for me for the longest time. I always wondered about the PS Vita, so when I finally got one, I really wanted to like it. Which, I mean, I eventually did when I got the memory card. So when I did get the memory card, I was able to play my games, put videos and music on it, and just have a blast with the device. That leads me into my next thing I want to talk about, the games. People do say there aren't a lot of games on the Vita, which is right. But there are also indie games to consider, downloadable games, and of course there's custom firmware out there as well to increase your library. If I mention all of the games I have played on my Vita, this video will be like 3 hours long, which is not my intention. However, maybe in the future I will make a video of me talking about all the games I have played from the PlayStation Store, but this video is about the device and what it has to offer. So let me talk about the software, because that is what games are. Curse of the Moon is a game I spent lots of hours in. If you played the old school Castlevania and love it, this game is for you. It is retro greatness start to finish. It's an action platforming game where you could pick a swordsman, a wizard, an alucard character who turns into a bat, or a girl with a whip if you want to feel like you're in Castlevania. Each character has their advantages and flaws. It's an amazing game. Also, you have great ports of PS2 games like Final Fantasy X and Metal Gear Solid 2 and Snake Eater. But there was one other game I had my eye on before I bought a Vita, which was Ease 8. Yes, I know that it came out on the Nintendo Switch and PS4, which I could have just bought on those consoles, but I wanted to experience Ease 8 and the console it was programmed for, which was the PS Vita, and boy! Am I glad that I did. Again, I had to hunt this game down, but thankfully I didn't have a hard time finding it like I did that memory card. Unfortunately, I found it at a GameStop out of town. I had to drive like two hours to get the game, but it was totally worth it because I knew the game was going to be amazing. Those GameStop people didn't haggle me because I was buying a game for a dying console, so they didn't haggle me, thank god. I saw reviews of this game saying positive things about it, my friends were saying that it was better than Yee 7 and also I needed to play it before I died. I know, crazy right? When a friend tells me that, I know I have to at least give the game a try. So when I turned it on, started my file, I was instantly captivated. There was a quote by Adol and a little tune playing which instantly hooked me to the game. Unfortunately, the week after I bought Ease 8, COVID hit, but that meant that I had a lot of time to play that game. I played that game for 10 hours straight each day of the week, and ultimately beat the game. After I beat Ease 8, I teared up because of how great it was, and knew that it was one of the best games I have ever played in my life. <clears throat> Sorry, got sidetracked with Ease 8. Now, let's go back to the Vita review. Yes, it is a fact that the PS Vita didn't have a lot of major titles that came out for it, but Ease 8 alone is enough to invest in this device. I guess you could buy that game on the Nintendo Switch or PS4, but if you are a true pocket master, you would play the game where it started before it was ported over everywhere. 
Now let me talk about the things you can do with this device. Like the PSP, the PS Vita has custom firmware, but it's 10 times better than the PSP's custom firmware. However, once you install the custom firmware onto your device, your music and video app may glitch up. So if you're a big fan of having videos and music on your PS Vita, do not get custom firmware. But hey, there are other music and video apps out there you can download if you have CFW installed. Anyways, the Vita has something called Henkaku and Enzo, which is custom firmware that allows you to do awesome stuff on your Vita. Once you set it up properly, you could have applications like RetroArch, Adrenaline, Easy RPG Player, Book R Mod Vita, Media Center, and Eleven Music Player. I mentioned those few because those are applications I use a lot. RetroArch is an emulator where you can play games from the NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, Sega Master System, and a little bit of MAME. I spend a lot of time on RetroArch when I wait for my doctor's appointment or when I capture footage for my videos. Yes, you heard that right. I use my Vita to get footage for a lot of my pocket talks. I'll get into that in a little bit. Adrenaline is an application where it kind of turns your PS Vita into a PSP. In there you can play PSP ISOs you've downloaded or preserved if you want to call it that. And also play some of the PSP emulators. <laughs> Gosh, wrap your head around that. You're emulating something that is emulating something else. That is insane. But anyways, I use Adrenaline to play Neo Geo games because the Neo Geo emulator works well on there as opposed to the one on the Vita. I cannot get that Neo Geo's emulator to work on the Vita properly. The Media Center and 11 Music Player is the alternative to your video and music player because I don't know why but something happens to your original music and video player app when you install custom firmware. I do not know if it's just me that it is happening to but you know, it's whatever. I don't really watch videos or listen to music on the Vita too much, but you know, when I decide to do these things, um, these applications seem to work well as an alternative. Oh, and here's another thing you can do with your Vita. Do you see my PS Vita screen on the computer? Yes. That's right, you can even project your Vita to a computer screen, capture footage, or stream it on Twitch. It is truly amazing! I bet you're probably wondering, well how the heck do you get all of that to work? How can I even get started? Well, here's how I got started. Go watch Blaine Locklear's video titled, How to Jailbreak PS Vita in 2021 Fast and Easy. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. That video is, in my opinion, the best video on YouTube on how to get your Vita completely gel broken. It is exactly how I got mine to where it is. And if you follow his guide, you can too, without a doubt. If you want more gadgets or software for your Vita, Tech James also makes lots of comprehensible videos out there. And if you want to keep up with the PS Vita news and what is happening within the community, there's PS Vita at 2am. That guy makes some awesome videos. I will also leave a link to their channels below. Finally, let me talk about if the Vita is worth getting. It is a dying console down to its final few breaths. However, every time I think it's gonna die, it's still around. So is it worth getting? Um, yes, the PS Vita is definitely worth getting now. It is actually the best time to get a Vita. The custom firmware bugs are not too crazy as they once were. More stuff is coming out in the hacking scene such as Grand Theft Auto, that trilogy, uh, a Dreamcast emulator, and someone is even porting Cuphead onto the Vita. I know Sony is trying to bury this device, but so much is happening for the Vita because the community is making it happen. It looks like the PS Vita belongs to the players now. It's a very interesting time for this device and I am very glad I own one. If you do not have one, I hope this video has encouraged you to buy one because it is definitely one of my top 5 portable devices of all time. You know, it's actually probably my favorite device because I'm always carrying it around with me. 
it's convenient to carry around, the games are great, and custom firmware has unlocked a lot of doors with this device. That's all for this Pocket Talk. I will see you all in the next video. Please leave a like, comment, and share this video. This is Chris the Pocket Master of Phoenix Splash Gaming saying goodnight gamers.